Friuli uh, Venezia Giulia um, was created in 1963. So uh, a bit late with respect to uh, and uh, to the Republican Constitution, um, which entered into force uh, the first of January 1948. Uh, which were the reasons for this delay? Um, as you probably know, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia is the in the northeastern part of Italy. So we are located between two borders, uh, the northern one with Austria and the eastern one with Slovenia, which was a uh, former part of the uh, Socialist Federation of Yugoslavia. So basically the reasons for the delay of the creation of our region um, were, are basically can be reconducted to um, the political, uh, the historical and the juridical background uh, of those years. In particular, the question of the border, of the eastern border in Italy was very disputed and it found a final solution only in 1977 with the so-called Osimo Treaty with the former Yugoslavia. Um, so, just after the enactment, the enactment of the constitutions, the constitution, there were too many problems to be still solved. And uh, as a sort of compromise, uh, the Italian parliament decided to approve the constitutional law, which is our special statute, only in 1963, when the situation was not completely solved, but anyway, um, was uh, um, a bit more clear than it was just after uh, the end of the Second World War. Um, this is the reason why our special statute um, is a bit, uh, let's say, um, not very um, strong as far as some topics are concerned. For instance, the protection of minorities. We have in our region, as Matteo will, will explain us, two kinds of uh, minorities, the Slovenian one and German one. The Slovenian one is the biggest one, but um, uh, in our statute, the only, the only article which deals with these minorities is Article 3 of the statute. And basically, uh, it says that uh, um, it states the principle of equality of all citizens, of all individuals within our region, um, uh, without any kind of difference between those who belong to one minority or to the other. But uh, there is no other statement in the statute con um, concerning uh, the minorities. And uh, the reason for this silence of the statute um, can be reconducted to the fear still present in 1963 that um, um, if the minority questions um, would have been more stressed within the special statute, it could have raised uh, some claims or could be considered as a, a legal basis for um, claims uh, from the uh, Yugoslavian side to say, well, this is our land, so we must have it back. So, um, in that period, in 1963, uh, our region was very divided because uh, in the end it, is, it, is, it can be considered as a result of an addiction from different components which came from different uh, histories. Um, they came also from different legal systems. Um, we can think about the fact that some parts of the regions were uh, part of the former um, Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, until 1918. 
And so uh, this means, uh, as I've already said, also a different administrative culture. Um, so the first question to be solved in 1963 was the creation of a homogeneous region, a united region, in which um, conditions of life of the people could be equivalent in every part of it. And this was the first challenge. And uh, um, to achieve this purpose, um, a special autonomy of our region consisted basically in wider powers concerning um, the governance of the economic context. Um, so the region was given uh, some um, interesting legislative powers uh, concerning the economic development. Uh, through these legislative powers, in the end, um, one uh, nowadays can say that uh, the goal was reached and is reached. I mean that now in our region, conditions of life of the people are really good and equivalent in every part of it. Um, another challenge was to create a common regional identity. Um, and uh, this was very challenging because, as I told you, the, um, the various components of the new region came from different cultural backgrounds. Well, I can say that nowadays, but uh, I would like uh, um, also to listen to the opinion of my colleagues. Uh, nowadays, we can say that there is a common regional identity, a common regional feeling of what being a citizen of Friuli Venezia Giulia region means. Um, but anyway, there are still some divisions among the different parts of the region, and in particular among the one that can be considered the uh, historical Friuli, which is uh, the central part of the region and the biggest one, and the so-called Venezia Giulia, which can be identified in um, in that um, slice of land surrounding Trieste on the Adriatic Sea. Um, for instance, as probably Pier Marco will explain us, uh, one of the biggest issues concerning this question of different identities in the last years arose from the fact that uh, um, the regional legislator decided to abolish the intermediate level of governance called province. And now in our region, we have in fact only two levels of government, comuni, commons, and the region. We have nothing in between, or at least not, nothing compulsory. There are some several forms of intermunicipal cooperation, for instance, but they are not compulsory. Provinces were compulsory. There were uh, they were um, uh, constitutionally recognized as uh, levels of government. And in particular, there, were, there was the so-called Provincia di Udine, uh, that uh, symbolically represented the Friulanian, let's say, part of the region. Uh, with the abolition of these provinces, um, some people say um, that the identity of the region um, somehow loses something. But uh, I don't know, it's difficult to say to until what extent the institutional framework is useful to preserve uh, and to consolidate the identity? It's a big question, in my opinion. I think that there is a mutual relationship, but it's difficult to understand uh, which part of this uh, dilemma <laughs> is more, uh, is prevailing on the other one. 
Um, so nowadays, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm reaching the conclusion, nowadays uh, our region uh, has uh, different challenges considering the past ones. And I think that the biggest one uh, deals with uh, um, transnational cooperation. Uh, as I told you, we faced two different borders, and especially in the past, for this reason, uh, our region has been considered, especially towards the Eastern Europe, a sort of bridge region. A region that could represent a sort of bridge towards the Eastern Europe. Well, nowadays we have a very good relationship with Slovenia, with, Slovenia, with Croatia, uh, let's say with all the Western Balkans, more or less. But I think that the cooperation uh, uh, could be increased also with Austria, of course, um, in the perspective of the creation of uh, Euro regions. In my opinion, this is a very interesting perspective because I think that uh, regions facing borders within the European context um, are somehow the, uh, the most important bricks for the construction of an idea of Europe, of a united Europe with solid bases. And so, in my opinion, this is now the big challenge we have towards us um, to consolidate transnational cooperation and to be open to accept within our community people coming also from uh, uh, not necessarily from uh, the neighbor states, but also from uh, states which are much far from us. And uh, I'm speaking about refugees, first of all. Um, another big challenge, but uh, from this point of view, we share the same situation with all other Italian regions. The other big challenge is the enactment uh, of uh, um, this very big national plan, um, which is the enactment of the next generation EU. Um, from this point of view, the Italian situation is not very uh, positive as far as the regional perspective is concerned, because this plan has been constructed in a very centralized way. And now also the enactment of the plan doesn't involve that much the regional level of government. And so this is a problem because, uh, as you can perfectly understand, the, um, the possibility to achieve good results with the enactment of this plan, which involves really a lot of money, um, deal necessarily with the involvement of the regional governments, because all the strategies, all the actions somehow interfere with uh, the regional sphere, sphere of government and even with the legislative competences of the region. But still now, as I told you, the situation uh, um, is, is quite uh, is still centralized and uh, I hope that the governments will realize the necessity to involve regions in this uh, enactment. Uh, um, development of the plan. So um, I think I, uh, I should stop now and um, if you agree I can give straight the floor to Matteo Dei Campi. Um, Matteo will speak about uh, linguistic pluralism in Friuli Venezia Giulia. <clears throat> uh, sorry I interrupt only to say that I'm recording uh, on request of Professor Toniatti to share with other members of ASA uh, group. Okay. And may, uh, I, may, may I pose one question before you start, Matteo? Sure. Can you say a few more words about this plan? Is this the use of interregional EU money or a different plan? 
no, no, the use of uh, European funds, yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. So, um, I, I start. <laughs> So the linguistic pluralism in Free Vezza Giulia, uh, Professor Dorlando just anticipated uh, a little bit of the of the subject um, because uh, yeah the uh, linguistic composition of uh, Free Vezza Giulia population is one of the I would say most peculiar aspects of this region. Um, uh, given the few minutes, I will. Uh, uh, we'll try to stay within the 10 minutes uh, we gave us as as a limit. Uh, given the few minutes, I will just uh, briefly describe the concrete situation of the region on a linguistic and, let's say, community level. Um, the structure of the constitutional protection of minority rights in the Italian constitutional order and how this is declined in Frivenza Giulia. So a quick presentation of the of the region. In Friuli Giulia, we have four languages spoken. So of course, uh, Italian. Uh, there's uh, a quite large Slovenian community, uh, which uh, was uh, anticipated by Professor Dorlando. There is a tiny German speaker community, just in five municipalities, uh, municipalities in the mountains uh, of Friuli Giulia, near to the border with Austria. And plus, uh, there is an historic uh, autochthonous linguistic minority. Uh, the language is the Friulian language, which is a Latin uh, language. And again, uh, the, the situation is quite peculiar because the Friulian language, the Friulian community involves almost half of the population of the region um, based on the data that um, the region uh, published. Uh, 600,000 of people in the region declare to use uh, this minority language at least uh, from time to time. So it's half of the population of the, the whole region. But um, I would say that the Friulian community has a weak identity because the Friulian language and, and the, the culture uh, related to that is perceived as a family language, as a private language, and it mm, does not involve the or uh, involves less than we could expect the public uh, sphere, the, the, the public relations. Um, so this is the, the, the concrete situation. Um, I will step back uh, to the protection of minorities in uh, Italian constitutional and uh, in Italian constitutional order. Um, very schematic. Uh, in the Italian constitutional order, um, minority rights are recognized on a territorial basis, so the rights are recognized just in the historical settlement uh, um, municipalities uh, or regions where the minority groups are historically settled, and on a linguistic basis. So basically, uh, minorities in Italy are linguistic minorities. And plus, the nature of this uh, mm, protection is uh, um, multi-level and asymmetric. Why multi-level? Of course, it involves many levels of regulations. You as international lawyers may know very well, well, you already said that uh, while we were presenting ourselves, uh, the international European level of protection, so framework convention of national minorities, European charter, regional minority languages and so on, just to say, uh, oh, so that's OK, uh, the, then we have the constitutional level uh, and in the national constitutions at the Article 6 um, provides the, the Republic safeguards linguistic minorities by means of appropriate measures. So that's the constitutional uh, uh, point of view. Then there are some um, uh, another side of the international law. So there are bil bilateral uh, international treaties with the keen state of the groups and minorities. So, for example, Austria for German speakers in Zutirol or Slovenia for Slovenian speakers in Frivenza Giulia with the Treaty of Osimo. Well, um, in the 70s, there was still, of course, uh, Yugoslavia, but nowadays it's Slovenia. Um, then at the uh, legislative level, uh, we have uh, 
framework law at the national level uh, in 1999 um, it was uh, so published and that a law that recognized the status of 12 historic minorities among which there is also the free language so this uh, um, framework law at the national level as the Itali italian constitutional court established i would say that set this uh, framework law set the standard of uh, uh, minority rights uh, in uh, in Italy, in the balance between uh, minority protection and uh, unitarian values, for example, in the schools or other other aspects. Uh, so then, so national level of legislation, and then we have some specific regional laws to enforce the, the protection and promotion of the rights established in the uh, national law. Um, the uh, and this is the multi-level nature of the protection of uh, of minorities. About the asymmetric um, nature of this protection, um, I, I said there is a common standard of protection and promotion of minorities within the um, national framework, but every single group has its own specific status. So that uh, Professor Toniatti himself uh, used. Uh, I, almost 30 years ago, I guess, uh, the distinction between uh, recognized minorities with uh, potential protection, which, for example, uh, is the Friulian one, and uh, recognized and the super protected minorities, which are the uh, minorities uh, in special regions, the French speaker in Aosta Valley, German and Latin speakers in Trentino Zutirol, and the Slovenian speakers in Friulianza Giulia. And this uh, multi-level and asymmetric uh, nature of minority protection in, in the constitutional order, Ital Italian constitutional order, is declined, of course, even in the Friuli Venezia Giulia context. So we have three groups, three different levels of protection and promotion, and three different levels of funding of the activities of, of minority communities. So about the Slovenian speakers, the Slovenian community, um, the recognition of rights of this community is based on the Osimo Treaty in the 70s with Yugoslavia. Um, there is also, um, based on that, a specific national law, uh, 38 in 2001, um, that provides a very, I would say, very deep level of protection and promotion of the rights of the um, Slovenian community. So, uh, just to, for example, um, in Friulevetsa Giulia, there are Slovenian in the historical settlement municipalities of the Slovenian community. There are Slovenian schools at every level of uh, of education. Um, there is the right to use the language uh, with the public administration. Um, there is uh, um, political participation guarantee through the electoral system for the regional parliament. So the electoral law is designed to guarantee that at least one elected, one uh, member is elected uh, from a Slovenian community party. Um, this is the, uh, plus the, there are the, the, the um, regional legislation on Slovenian community um, is just uh, uh, an enforcement of the rights recognized at a national level. Then we have the Friulian language, the Friulian community, and, and after many years of, uh, of legislative and funding initiatives, I would say almost all at the cultural level, um, after the national framework law in 1999, in uh, uh, 2007, the region, Friulianza Giulia, uh, approved a law of protection um, of Friulian language at Friulian community uh, with um, the recognition of uh, uh, quite uh, uh, important um, promotional measures uh, such as the possibility to have the Friulian language in the schools as elective uh, subject, um, the use of the Friulian language in the topography, 
and the street uh, and so on and with the public administration but the uh, and this is this is it's important to, to note that in this case uh, the uh, rec this recognition is uh, based on the progressive enforcement so it's not guarantee at the time uh, but it's uh, uh, linked to a uh, progressive uh, enforcement, of course. And uh, about the political representation, for example, in the in regional and municipal assemblies, there is the right to make the speeches and the communications in in the freeman language with the translation. So uh, even that uh, aspect is covered, I would say. And um, and in the end, and I, I will finish here my, my intervention, uh, the German community, the German is very, very, very little, uh, there are few people. Um, so at, at a theoretical point of view, the, they share the same protection uh, of the Friulian um, community under the 1999 National Framework Law. But given the small size, the initiative, the enforcement initiatives at a regional level are um, quite limited. There is a, a specific regional law on uh, measures for um, German speakers community, but uh, both on a substantive would say, and financial level, uh, the enforcement is uh, quite less uh, uh, relevant. And uh, thank you. As I said, Professor uh, Spiliopolo, we are very self-disciplined. Ten minutes, very precise. <laughs> thank you, Matteo. OK, thank you, Matteo. So um, I think that we, we can leave in, in the end, in the discussion, um, comments and uh, questions and so on. So um, I give the floor now to uh, Federico Nasuato. Uh, Federico will speak about international and EU rela relations of the region. Please, Federico. Thank you, Professor. I hope to be as uh, precise as Matteo in uh, respecting the time. Um, I will focus on the uh, legal and uh, institutional framework of the international activities led by the region and then mention just some of the main projects. Um, the importance of the international activities uh, uh, derives directly from the historical and geographical background of Friuli Venezia Giulia, as uh, uh, Professor Dorlando an has already anticipated in the uh, introductory remarks. Uh, let's say that on one hand, the fact that the region is located in a border area with two foreign countries and it is a it is close to the borders of the third one, as certainly uh, encouraged the development of cross-border relations. On the other hand, the international projection of the region also originates from the historical events of the Eastern Italian border. In this context, uh, our area has acquired an important position related to the diplomacy between the involved states. After all, the uh, region's spatial autonomy itself, as we, as we heard before, uh, is somehow linked to the obligations deriving from international treaties entered into by Italy. And the development of international activities by regional bodies of Friuli Venezia Giulia is a direct consequence of these uh, commitments. For all these reasons, uh, we can say that the region shows a strong uh, uh, inclination to build international relations. Besides, uh, uh, the limits and forms of implementation of these relations by Friuli Venezia Giulia um, do not differ from those of the other Italian regions. In fact, in this branch, the national legal regime is the same for all regions. Under national law, every region in the matters uh, falling within its competence may set up agreements with foreign states or with territorial bodies internal to a foreign state in order to promote uh, its uh, economic, social and cultural uh, development. Uh, however, the region must give notice of that in advance to the national government. Uh, which can indicate the principles and criteria to be followed. 
In concluding uh, these agreements, uh, the region cannot express assessment uh, concerning the foreign policy of the state and cannot undertake uh, commitments uh, involving uh, financial obligations for the state or harming uh, the interests of other subnational entities. Also, with specific regard to the relations with, uh, between a region and a foreign state, the region can conclude only executive agreements related to international treaties uh, already uh, entered into force or technical administrative agreements or programmatic agreements. So only certain kind of, uh, um, of agreements. As I said, this is a common regulation for all Italian regions. Nevertheless, uh, since 1991, the state legislation has uh, uh, formally recognized the strategic role of Friuli Venezia Giulia in particular in, develop in the development of economic and financial uh, cooperation with uh, foreign countries, especially in Eastern and Central Europe, in the logic of uh, the bridge uh, towards uh, Eastern uh, and, and the Balkans, Eastern Europe and the Balkans, uh, uh, which uh, we have said uh, before. Uh, this law established two institutions managed by the region, Informest, a public agency that provides uh, documentation and information to economic operators, and Finest, a region-owned company that finances the uh, internationalization process of companies located within the region. In, re in uh, relation to the regional sources of law, under the Autonomous Statute of Friuli Venezia Giulia, the national government must consult the regional government about the drafting of trade agreements with foreign states that may affect the uh, cross-border traffic uh, in the region. Regarding then the uh, allocation of powers between the regional authorities, under the statute, the president of the regional executive is responsible for international relations. But, it com but in, in compliance with the guidelines uh, that are expressed by the regional uh, uh, assembly, uh, the regional parliament, to, to be clear, in a, uh, expressed in a multi-year document. The president is required to periodically inform the assembly on the activities which have been uh, carried out, but uh, uh, regarding the conclusion of agreements, he must inform the assembly in advance. Furthermore, the Assembly must ratify by law the conclusion of agreements uh, which uh, involve new financial obligations for the regions or changes in uh, regional laws. Let's move now to the relation between, uh, the, uh, between Friuli Venezia Giulia and the European Union law. The region, in matters uh, uh, falling within its competence, participates to the drafting process of EU law in the so-called ascending phase or bottom-up phase. Also, it takes part in the process of implementation of EU law and fulfillment of the obligation resulting from EU acts in the descending phase or top-down phase. As far as the uh, bottom-up phase is concerned, the regional legislation has introduced the so-called uh, European session of the regional assembly. In this session, the annual legislative program designed by the European Commission is examined, as well as the national government's uh, report on relations between the state and the European Union. Um, the law regulates also the participation and hearing of local authorities and other stakeholders. The aim of this is to uh, identify the issues of greatest interest to the regional area on which the uh, regional assembly may express observations and guidelines to be sent to the regional uh, executive. The law requires also that the president of the executive promptly informs the assembly on the initiatives uh, uh, carried, out, carried out by the region in shaping the Italian position within the process of European uh, lawmaking. Uh, a standing committee of the Assembly can express observation or resolutions to determine the political direction of the regional executive. Furthermore, the um, president of regional government may entrust the standing committee within, with the examination of specific uh, EU, EU legislative proposals. 
and the committee can express uh, again observations and transmit them to the president to the president and the competent state bodies also with regard to the early control on compliance with the principle of uh, proportionality and subsidiarity in matters of regional competence. In this way, a collaborative model is established between the regional government and the assembly, under which both can express their position concerning the EU legislative proposal on an equal level. The shaping of a shared and unique position between the two bodies is not mandatory under the regional law, but the standing committee ensures the connection between them in order to reach a synthesis. Moving to the top down phase, every Italian region in, matter, in matters falling within its competence implements uh, the European directives uh, in compliance with the criteria and guidelines established by the national government. Uh, the main tool is an annual law enacted by every Italian region and aimed to implement uh, uh, EU law. Fiore Venezia Giulia was one of the, of the first regions to introduce this instrument in 2004. Every year, the regional government presents a bill for uh, uh, the fulfillment of the obligations resulting from EU acts with uh, an attached report on the compliance of regional law with the European Union. The report includes the list of directives uh, to be uh, implemented and the infringement procedures in progress uh, against the state for breaches of uh, European law made by the region. Then the assembly examines the report uh, and shall pass a uh, resolution about it and then the members of the assembly debate and vote the implementing, uh, implementing legislation. After this brief uh, um, overview regarding the legal framework uh, of the uh, international and European relations of Yuri Venezia Giulia, I would like to close uh, my speech by mentioning some of the most relevant cross-border activities and programs led by the region. Uh, firstly, the participation in uh, Euro regions and in uh, European groupings of uh, territorial cooperation. In particular, the region is uh, a member of the Adriatic Ionian Euro region, the Alpine um, macro region and the so-called Euro region without borders created in 2012 together with another Italian region, Veneto, a border region with uh, Venezia Giulia and uh, an uh, Austrian one, Carinzia. Another relevant instrument of cooperation is the EGTC GO, um, established between the Italian city of Gorizia and the Slovenian city of Nova Gorizia, which will be joint uh, European capitals of culture in 2025. And this is an extraordinary achievement, considering that the, the two cities, which indeed form a unique urban area, have been split up by a wall part of the Iron Curtain during the whole period of the Cold War. These are only few examples which can uh, testify the significant uh, uh, activism of the region in the branch of international cooperation, which is considered to be a core part of its political, economic and cultural identity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Federico. Um, now I give the floor to Pier Marco Rosesalva. Pier Marco will speak about the regulation of local authorities. Pier Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, and good afternoon once more. Uh, I prepared also a couple of slides to make it easier to follow the, uh, my brief presentation. I will comply with uh, Francesco's indication. I will try to at least. Um, and. Uh, I will briefly uh, stop on the um, main point uh, concerning the regulation of public uh, uh, local authorities in, uh, in Friuli Venezia Giulia, uh, starting uh, from the uh, legislative powers. Uh, the question is indeed who holds the legislative power to regulate public uh, authorities in uh, in Friuli Venezia Giulia. Uh, then we have to move, first of all, from the Italian Constitution, uh, from Article 117, uh, paragraph 2, uh, that, as we can see, uh, vests the legislative power to, re to regulate electoral legislation, governing bodies, and fundamental function of the municipalities 
provinces and metropolitan cities, these uh, are the, uh, the legal government authorities we have uh, in Italy, uh, at least also in, in the other regions. We will see that the situation in Friuli Venezia Giulia is partly different. So, first of all, it is the, the state that has the uh, exclusive legislative power in this, uh, in this matter. Um, Friuli Venezia Giulia has the, uh, the special competence uh, that uh, was entrusted to the regional assembly, to the regional parliament by the, uh, the special statute, but uh, as uh, it has already been said, it is a constitutional law. And uh, at the beginning, it didn't provide, it didn't trust the region with a very wide competence in this matter, but uh, after the 1993 with uh, constitutional law number two, uh, the Italian Parliament decided to extend uh, the legislative power of Friuli Venezia Giulia, but also of other uh, special uh, regions uh, of Italy, uh, providing them also the, the, the power to regulate the organization of local authorities and their districts. Uh, this is a primary competence. Uh, but uh, it's a competence that need to be exercised with, exercise within some limits. Uh, and indeed, Article 4 of the Special Statute uh, uh, frame this, uh, these limits. Uh, and for sure, and, uh, it's a competence that need to be exercised in harmony with the Constitution and the general principle of, uh, principles of our legal order. But most of all, uh, it is a competence that the regional assembly may exercise uh, within the fundamental norms of economic and social reforms that have been adopted by the, by, by the Italian parliament, the national legislator. And uh, so this is the first limit uh, that the, it is a very important limit, uh, of course, that the regional assembly uh, encounter when it's dealing with the issues uh, concerning uh, local government uh, in the Friuli Venezia Giulia uh, framework experience, because when we have a, a national law that is qualified at fundamental norms, it, it means that the, the regional assembly need to comply with that norm. And, this brought many limits to the power of the, uh, the regional assembly in dealing with the issues and in uh, trying also to uh, uh, provide the local authorities with innovative, innovative uh, tools and innovative solutions to comply, to try to pursue at the best the issues and the need of the, uh, the regional uh, experiences. And uh, thanks to that uh, to that uh, power of the region during the time as we will see at the at the chance to intervene multiple times in order to deal uh, especially with the uh, collaboration between uh, uh, local authorities, in particular between municipal, among the various municipalities. Um, looking uh, uh, at the structures of the local authorities uh, organization in Friuli Venezia Giulia, it is still uh, uh, the special statute that the, the provide, uh, give us the, uh, the structures, stating that the organization is based on the municipalities, uh, but could also be aggregated in the form of the metropolitan cities uh, as autonomous mandatory bodies with their uh, own status. So the base is municipalities. And then this is, uh, uh, as we will see, this is a norm that uh, has been modified in 2016 when the provinces have been abolished, have been repealed, so also the regional status have been modified on that, uh, on, on the structural uh, form. So we start from Article 54, which provides the municipalities as the basic, the first layer of uh, regional structure of uh, local government. And then we have Article 11 that uh, provides us with a fundamental uh, disposition that enables uh, the local uh, authorities as uh, the municipalities to collaborate and in particular to uh, be aggregated also if possible, if necessary, but this is a decision of a regional assembly in mandatory ways, compulsory ways. Uh, Professor Dolanda has already been said that today there are not, not really many compulsory forms of collaboration, but it's still the special statute that provides the uh, regional legislator with a possibility to implement also mandatory form of collaboration uh, on the grounds of the principles, not only of subsidiarity, but also of adequacy and uh, uh, above all else of differentiation in order to experiment uh, some phases of uh, um, collaboration 
uh, suited uh, for the specific uh, territory. Uh, indeed, in uh, in um, in Friuli Venezia Giulia, we have uh, 215 municipalities. This is a map of. Uh, of uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia with all the districts of the municipalities, uh, but today's are are not uh, um, framed into provinces because already been said at, until uh, uh, 2016 uh, we had uh, uh, different layers of lo local government uh, municipalities at the base. Then we had at the intermediate level the provinces as you can see from this uh, uh, image. And then we had in between the possibility of cooperation among uh, uh, municipalities, so in between provinces and uh, uh, municipalities, our comuni. It was after the uh, modification of the statute in uh, 2016 with uh, constitutional law uh, number one, that provinces have been abolished in, uh, in this uh, region, uh, opening uh, the issues of finding uh, the proper solution to uh, enable municipalities to uh, deal with the fragmentation uh, issues. Uh, we have a lot of municipality with uh, uh, very uh, small districts in, in some cases, also with uh, budgetary issues. Uh, and so since two, 2016, the regional assembly had to uh, intervene with uh, different re reforms in order to identify the best uh, uh, way to ensure collaboration between municipalities. So we have some, we, we had uh, uh, different uh, tools form of uh, large area authorities and today we have also the possibility to create uh, at least the, the statute uh, uh, entrust the, the regional legislator with the possibility also to create the metropolitan cities, but uh, those uh, specific authorities have not been uh, created. Um, in general, if we, we regard on the specific, specific side of, uh, we have to look at uh, which are the uh, provisional of the statute that uh, organize and discipline the local government uh, in Friuli Venezia Giulia, for sure we have to comply, the regional legislator has to comply with uh, some national provisions that are uh, provided by the legislative decree 267 of 2000, which is a, the consolidated text of the law, which uh, goes to regulating all uh, public authority, local authorities in the whole Italy. And then also for the uh, cooperative uh, intermunicipal part, we have uh, the law 56 of uh, 2014. So this is, these are the, um, the national law that provide with some general uh, social and economic reform uh, provision that the region needed to uh, comply with, uh, but in within that uh, um, framework, uh, the regional legislator, uh, following the modification it statute in 1993, uh, intervened multiple times uh, at the beginning by sectoral reforms, uh, and then uh, with organic intervention, but focused uh, since uh, 2014 on intermunicipal cooperation and especially after after the uh, abolishment of provinces that opened up indeed the, the issues of fragmentation the regional legislators that have been have been trying to identify the best solution uh, also by means of uh, uh, of studies also as from the legal studies department of the university of Wooden have been uh, working with, with the regional assembly in order to propose the best solution uh, thanks to a cooperative approach we have been looking to france and germany in order to uh, propose the best solution uh, the regional assembly as you can see has tried multiple times to identify the best solution uh, today uh, it's in effect uh, the, law, the, uh, the regional law 21 and 2019, which provide uh, uh, identify different collaborative forms. We have some uh, uh, not compulsory forms or so communities uh, in order to to be very, 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 very brief. Uh, communities are entity between uh, neighboring municipalities that uh, can be activated on a facultative, uh, on a voluntary basis, uh, while only for mountain, com mountain uh, municipalities, there is a compulsory obligation of uh, aggregation in order to better carry out these uh, uh, municipal uh, functions. Uh, just to conclude, before being also available for, for questions, this is the situation as a 
of, as of today, we have uh, on the northern part of Friuli Venezia Giulia, um, the mountain uh, communities that uh, have been created uh, directly by the law, uh, a special hill community uh, in, in the middle also that was mandatory. But for the rest, as you can see, uh, in two years, only three uh, uh, in only three communities have been voluntarily activated, uh, leaving for the rest the issues of identifying the best way to uh, deal with these uh, with these issues uh, of uh, fragmentation and uh, budgetary issues. And uh, Francesco, I've been in the time. So uh, this is one of the, the a specific uh, issues that uh, the region have been dealing with, uh, trying to bring forward different solution. So uh, it's not something that we have in the ordinary regions uh, because ordinary regions don't uh, do not have uh, do not hold the specific powers to discipline in forms of cooperation and also. Uh, other special regions have uh, tried to enact different form of cooperation, but I think uh, for sure, but uh, really Venezia Giulia has been trying uh, and spending a lot of uh, uh, of time in trying to identify the best solution. Maybe we are still trying to understand if the last uh, law is uh, actually the best one. Uh, it's difficult to say because in the end uh, the legal side need to work with a more technical, maybe statistical side in order to see if the, the, the provision uh, is, is really inactive, is if the solution brings an improvement in uh, administrative uh, efficiency. Uh, we have been trying uh, trying a lot of solution. Uh, I don't know, with Professor Dolalno, we have been talking a lot. I don't know if this is the, the big question, I, I think, uh, and uh, for sure I would like to have some um, remarks. Uh, it's between compulsory forms of aggregation and voluntary form of, of aggregation. We had uh, intermediate the provinces, uh, uh, that were very wide. The province of Udine was the wider in Italy. Uh, and today the point is understanding uh, uh, how wide we have to make it. I will stop. Thank you. Sorry, Francesco, if I went too long. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pier Marco. And now, last but not least, Francesco uh, will speak about the financing of the region. Francesco, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I come straight to my paper because to respect our time boundaries. Uh, in order to understand the peculiarities of Friuli Venezia Giulia financial autonomy, it is necessary to briefly summarize the financing system of ordinary region. Then it will be easier to appreciate the differences with special regions. The revenues of ordinary regions are mainly made up of resources from a state fund, the health fund. They are state contributions. State parliament decides each year the total amount of this fund after having consulted in the conference of the regions, the representative body of all the regional governments. The financing system of special regions and so of Friuli Venezia Giulia is quite different. In our case, the point of reference is the uh, Statute of Autonomy of Friuli Venezia Giulia, which has the status of a constitutional act, as, as uh, Pier Marco said. Still, our legal system is not separated from state law, since the statute itself provides that regional finances shall be coordinated with those of the state and harmonized with the principle of national solidarity. In other words, it is necessary, necessary to verify case by case whether or not state budgetary and financial rules must be applied to Fariuli Venezia Giulia. Article 49 of the statute is the heart of our financing system. It establishes that the, the region shall receive nearly 60% of the revenue from state taxes generating within that regional territory. In other words, revenue from state taxes is shared between state and region. Technically, we speak of co-participation, compartecipazioni. There are some exceptions to this general rule. From, for some taxes, a lower percentage is established. Others are completely excluded from this mechanism of sharing. The statute of Rio Venezia Giulia also provides for the possibility to establish regional taxes. 
tax power of special region does not have the same limits of ordinary regions. It is not subject to state coordination, but only to the fundamental principle of the tax system. However, these principles include the prohibition of double taxation between state and the region. Basically, in a system full of state taxes, in Italy there are a lot of taxes also very specific, it means that even for special regions, the spaces for regional taxation are very limited. It is also important to underline that the provision of the statute on financial matters are not fixed and immutable. They have a special nature that differentiates them from the rest of the provision of the statute. Generally speaking, the statute is a constitutional act that can only be amended by state parliament through the strict procedure laid down for constitutional changes. The financial part of the statute, on the contrary, is amended by ordinary acts of state parliament, but with one very important specification. Before the change by, mm, done by an ordinary act, as I said, a specific agreement must be reached on the point between state and the region. Focusing on the peculiarities of the special statutes, because similar rules are pre present also in other special statutes, the Constitutional Court has affirm, affirmed that the principle of agreement constitutes a fundamental feature of special autonomy in the field of financial relation state region. In addition, the provision of the state has been specified and supplemented by the so-called implementing regulation in Italy's norme di attuazione, which are prepared by a commission composed equally of member appointed by the state and the region, and in our case, Professor Dorlandi is the president of the Commission in Friuli Venezia Giulia. On the other hand, it is worth remembering that a financial regulation adopted at European level after 2010 have had a significant impact on the financial autonomy on the region. They have justified incisive and unilateral intervention by the state or regional organization in finance, sometimes even without an agreement within the region. I will return to this point in a moment. To sum up, we can fix some points. First, the financial relations between state and Friuli Venezia Giulia are essentially bilateral, while those of the state with the other region are more top-down and multilateral. Second, the main source of funding for special regions, and for Venezia Giulia in particular, is the sharing of the revenue, revenue of state taxes generated in the territory of Friuli Venezia Giulia. Third, the special regions have a broader tax autonomy than the ordinary regions and have made a greater use of it, but not such as to compete with the main source of funding that is sharing revenue of uh, state taxes. Some regions with special autonomy, including Friuli Venezia Giulia, have been able to make full use of the possibilities offered by the principle of agreement and by the bilateral structure of their financial relation with the state. The region has concluded many overall financial agreements with the state normally every three years. These agreements have been implemented in various ways, in some cases through state acts, usually finance and budget acts. In other cases, through amendments to the statute of Friuli Venezia Giulia by state text, acts based on the agreement. In others, through the implementing regulation to the statutes prepared by the bilateral commission. For example, the agreements establish the region's contribution to sustainability of state public finance and public debt. You know that Italian public debt is very high, uh, is a big problem. In concrete terms, it means that the agreement states clearly the amounts of money that year by year Friuli Venezia Giulia has to transfer to the state for paying public debt and uh, sustain public finance. For example, for 2022, we are talking about 432 million euros. I would like to conclude with two significant examples of the use of the method of agreement to consolidate and to strengthen the autonomy of the region in financial terms and beyond. The first example is legislative decree number 154 of 2019 implementing regulations, so the, the, um, prepared by the Commission, the Bilateral Commission, on the coordination of public finance by the state. 
As I mentioned before, in Italy, the state often intervenes in a very incisive matter on regional competencies by invoking the financial impact of certain regulation and therefore to, they need to coordinate public finance. This is often done by invoking European budgetary rules. Well, the implementing regulation 2019 establishes that the application to Friuli Venezia Giulia of state tax on reduction of public expenditure must be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis in bilateral manner. This provision enhances the peculiarities of our regional system. For example, if in Friuli Venezia Giulia a public service is fully financed by the region, it makes no sense for the state to impose constraints on it. These rules are very important for our autonomy, but they do not overcome the problem of the lack of representation of the region in the Euronational proceeding by which state government and European Commission establish the overall financial objective of our country. These objectives have a direct impact on the specific financial burdens that Friuli Venezia Giulia must pay to the state. The representation of special regions in European decision making is a problem worthy of further investigation. The supranational regulation affects special autonomies without them having an adequate, adequate voice in supranational proceedings. The second example, second and last example, very important from our point of view, is the regulation of local finance, strictly linked with the topic of Pier Marco. In Italy, the regulation of local finance is traditionally a state competency. States establish ta local taxes, local finance. Some special regions, including Friuli Venezia Giulia, have abandoned this model, reaching a specific agreement with the state on this point. Over time, the region has acquired more and more responsibility for local finance. It is a come to build an integrated system with local authority on its territory. Integrated systems, uh, uh, region, local authorities. This has now been recognized by an appropriate amendment to our regional statute. Concretely, the region has the power to establish new local taxes and also to regulate differently some local taxes originally established by state law. In particular, the property tax, a topic very sensitive, both, both for, from an economic and political point of view. The revenue from local tax is assigned to the region as other funds that in ordinary regions the states give to local authorities. It is the region in Friuli Venezia Giulia that, within its territory, coordinates public finance and grants to local authorities an appropriate funding. It follows that the municipalities of Friuli Venezia Giulia have a stronger relationship with the region than with the state. In conclusion, we, we could say that the financing system of Friuli Venezia Giulia is quite different from that of ordinary region. The main peculiarities are the central role of the regional statutes and its, in, and its implementing regulation. The quantitative guarantee of the sharing of state tax revenue within the territory, the method of agreement in state region relations, and the integrated system between region and local authorities. The method of agreement has allowed to develop these peculiarities and to acquire even greater margins or autonomy over time. However, the, in my opinion, at least, the multilevel system does not appear fully coherent, since there are no structured form of participation of Rio Venezia Giulia in the financial relations between state and European Union that are mainly intergovernmental relations between Italian government and uh, European Commission. The existing mechanisms, so, do not enhance and protects completely the region's speciality in financial terms. Uh, I hope <laughs> I have respected uh, the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francesco, for this interesting overview. And uh, thank you also to all the other speakers of this very intense afternoon. <laughs> So um, now I would like to, to give the floor to our colleagues uh, um, from uh, Orland Island, uh, starting, for instance, from Sia. Thank you very much, Professor Dorlando. This was an impressive, and, and as Francesco was saying, you have been very um, disciplined and, and, and impressive in, in sharing so much knowledge in so short time. Now, I think that this is in not only for me, but also for my colleagues, overwhelming, because one 
one of the facts that, that I wanted to assert, and we have discussed that with Professor Toniati, is also that at the international level, there is very little knowledge about the other uh, regions, the other autonomous, special autonomous regions in Italy, uh, as uh, with perhaps the exception of, of South Tyrol, which has received much more attention. And, and there may be very excellent works. I know that there are excellent works in Italian, but for us who do not speak, only wish to be able to speak Italian, this is, is uh, not then accessible, especially at the professional level. And I think that you have showed here that um, there is an extreme uh, amount of competence in at the University of Udine that would really deserve to be documented. Now you have made four presentations uh, and, and with the introduction of Professor Dorlando, that in itself could be a book, basically. Uh, I think there is uh, so much knowledge. What strikes me, uh, of course, is the level of uh, changes that you have experienced in relatively short time. Uh, I, I note, for example, um, and I must say that that um, uh, who it was who was speaking about uh, the implementation of directives being changed, the system, yes, uh, after 2004, which I consider recently and, and um, then the province is being abolished in 2016. So this means that the past 20 years have been an enormous development in many ways. Um, and I think that it was very interesting to listen to Professor Dorlando's kind of long durée with, with the, the 60 years soon of the special st statute and what this speed in the 20 years has meant. Um, and just some very general questions then, perhaps, um, from my side, and, and I would like to ask then my colleagues to complement because they have uh, their own specialties. But first of all, I think that it's, it's um, really interesting to listen how several of you um, are in a pendulum all the time between the special statute as a constitutional order and the special statute as an interstate result. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, to what extent that has an influence in uh, both in the identity of the region and parts of the region, uh, but also what practical effect it has in things such as the functioning of the municipalities. You mentioned the local administrative cultures, for example, and, and things like that. Um, and uh, with regard to the, the position of the Friulian language and um, identity, I was wondering what whether there is an overlap between, of course, everyone speaks Italian, but I was wondering what the multiple identities in the region are, and also the, the influence from, um, someone spoke of refugees, I think it was Professor Dorlando and, and the migration. This is a big issue for the Orland Islands also, as we now have a population totally of 30,000, so much, much smaller than your 1.2 million, um, but where uh, nearly one out of, uh, sorry, three, um, how, how do you say, 30% um, of the population has its roots outside the Orland Islands. So kind of these thoughts about uh, the, the identity of the region as such. Uh, I will uh, then, um, mm -hmm, then the general question to you as you are all lawyers is about our understanding of the law as a system of divisions, divisions of competences, divisions of um, areas that have to be regulated 
as opposed to law as a system of cooperation. And I thought it was very interested in what um, uh, Pierre, uh, <laughs> sorry, now all the names, uh, Pierre Marco was talking about col um, mandatory versus uh, non mandatory uh, optional solutions. And that is very pertinent to the Orland Islands, where we have had um, decades of discussions about fusions of local authorities. I don't know if you have at all followed this debate, <laughs> uh, and it is still not a reality. It's uh, 16 local uh, municipalities still, but we now have a new system in the sphere, uh, a mandatory created system of um, social welfare cooperation between the local authorities. So it seems to me that we are going to the same direction of sometime uh, the, the regional authorities uh, at least opting for cooperation in certain mandatory cooperation in certain areas. And finally, I think that the issue of participation at the European net level, I would like to ask Susan to comment more on this because it is one of the core issues that um, that has not succeeded. But we have had a proposal for a revision of the Autonomy Act going on since 2010 on the Orlan Islands. Um, the economic system was revised in 2020. Um, it started being applied in 2021, so it's very recent. Minor changes, mainly reflecting the increase of population, uh, so that the return from the taxes is equivalent to the actual uh, what we pay to the state. And, and that differs from your system uh, with a 60% 60, 60 of state taxes uh, principle. Uh, but where we also have this common um, commission uh, which deals with economic affairs as the one you have mentioned. I think I will stick to those, to those issues to leave room also to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Presentations. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, um, so I give the floor to the other colleagues. Susan. Thank you very much. Uh, really, very, very interesting. And I'm also impressed at the the the, the speed and and uh, your um, uh, yeah how um, how you managed to fit all those things in in a very very short time. It was really interesting. And also from my part, I have very limited knowledge of uh, of your region from beforehand. Uh, somewhat more about South Tyrol. So please forgive me if I if I missed out of anything here. But um, I was really interested. Uh, um, maybe my, my questions are a bit uh, more from a political perspective, but I'm sure you will find a, 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 legal, a legal way to answer them anyways. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the, the main uh, ambitions from the side of the region when it comes to the autonomy. Uh, what, um, uh, you, you mentioned some parts of the competencies that you have, but I was uh, on on Holland. We have this. Uh, there has been this ambition to to uh, have uh, more competencies in some areas. For example, when it comes to the economic level, as Sia, Sia mentioned, and I was wondering if there are any uh, similar movement uh, in your region trying to expand either the scope or the depth of the of the autonomy over time, which uh, which would be really interested, interesting. And also, I think when it comes to to the issue of minority status and languages, if there are any such ambitions or interests to to widen the the uh, yeah again either the security or or the the, the rights that are that are um, linked to to those issues. So this this is one one of my first question. Uh, the other uh, concerns participation and influence, which is something I I did. Uh, uh, in, in my reports that I've written for the EU project that we have been working with at the Holland Island Peace Institute. Uh, those issues were interesting to me and um, 
Uh, I'm wondering uh, how is the representation at state level? Uh, I mean, in the in the parliament, uh, both uh, when it comes uh, comes to um, deputies, but also uh, more, do you have is there a room for negotiation at state level uh, from from uh, for the region? I'm comparing to South Tyrol, where this was brought up from time to time that there was scope for negotiation. Uh, from the side of the autonomy. And I'm wondering also at the European level, uh, at the SVP South Tyrol have their, have their MP, is there any similarity? Sorry if I uh, compare too much, but this is the system I know, so it's easier for me. Uh, and what other uh, entrance points do you have to Brussels? Where, where, what are your contact points in Brussels? Uh, but one very concrete question, is then South Tyrol and Trentino the only remaining provinces in Italy? That's uh, also one just very, uh, um, yeah. And then I, the last question would be, is there much cooperation or, or room for cooperation between the special regions? Can, uh, are there sometimes similar interests and, and negotiations uh, that are conducted jointly? Uh, in discussions with the state. So, yeah, thank you again for the excellent presentations. You're welcome. And um, Petra. Yes, thank you. I can only agree with my colleagues. And it was almost like an aha moment for me when Professor Rolando said this very beautiful um, most important that the regions are the most important bricks in the construct construction of a united europe that's that's a very beautiful way to put it and and uh, i understand that this is uh, if i understand your presentations correctly it took some time to form this this um special region that you have today but now it's quite a strong autonomy within within Italy and um, there there are some frustrations but and also experiments if I understood it correctly uh, but it's very well functioning now uh, as I understand it um, I would as this is not my topics normally uh, I'm interested in identity and also I would like to touch a little bit upon, upon environmental issues because you didn't at all um, uh, talk about them uh, as you also border um, the sea, the sea. What what kind of effect does does the sea have on the identity of the people in, in your region, and and how is the envir environmental status, and and how much is the environmental uh, legislation affected by the EU? That would be maybe one of my questions. And then uh, as as regards to identity. Uh, I might have missed something, but um, how are pol how is your political party system? Is it is it formed along the the linguistic lines, uh, or are there other factors that are more important? Mm. Also, attitudes towards the EU. Uh, is it generally uh, an EU positive region? I understand that um, you had a lot of benefits from the EU as far as uh, uh, regionalization is concerned, but uh, uh, maybe with the migration situations, there might be differences uh, uh, within the regions in attitudes. Um, yes, uh, I was also a little bit interested in this uh, mountain communities and hill community. If I draw a parallel to Åland, we have is of course very small, it's an island, but we also have 6,500 small islands. So we talk about the archipelago and then we don't talk about the main island. We have like, we have one city and that's Marihamn where we are located now. It has 11,000 11, inhabitants. So that's the town. And then we have the sort of countryside and, and then the archipelago. And these within this small, you talk about a lot of mm, different, um, um, uh, levels, but we also have within this small community many levels based on uh, maybe topographical situation. And, and is this also the case that the mountain regions have special challenges uh, and how do they uh, express themselves then? That would be my questions. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. And uh, uh, now I see that we have also another special guest, uh, who is our colleague Esther Hapacher from the University of Innsbruck. And um, I, I ask Esther if she would like to add something to this discussion. I don't know if uh, Esther can hear us. No, perhaps we we will come back to her later. Um, well, a lot of suggestions. Thank you very much. And I ask the speakers, first of all, if they want to at least start answering to some of these interesting suggestions. Um, for instance, um, Starting from Sia's suggestion, uh, difference between law as a system of division of competencies, law as an instrument of cooperation. Perhaps uh, Piermarco dealt a bit with this topic. Would you like to answer, Piermarco? Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, with pleasure. <laughs> And yes, yes, indeed. Uh, well, um, cooperation is uh, is one of the main issues uh, the, the region has been dealing with in the last ten uh, or more years, uh, at least since uh, uh, 2014. And uh, it's it's different. Uh, it's it's difficult to say because uh, at first, at, at the beginning, it was the law that uh, made it mandatory. Uh, the cooperation. Also, identifying the district for cooperation, so the municipality did not have the chance to to really decide at the beginning uh, to which form of cooperation they, they could join. So we also had uh, an administrative uh, procedure um, in front of the administrative tribunal of Trieste because some municipalities did not agree with the decision made by the region because they felt they should have been uh, inserted in a different district for cooperation. So, uh, first of all, we, we had uh, an issues, also uh, jurisdictional issues, uh, dealing with, uh, uh, yes, indeed, uh, the way of expressing, uh, expressing uh, identity also with regard to cooperation. And uh, so at the beginning, it was cooperation forced by the law, and then uh, subsequently uh, they decided uh, to make uh, so at the beginning, it was the, the region with the law or with regulations uh, to provide the districts for cooperation. They made the, some adjustment, but it was always a, a top-down decision. And it was then uh, subsequently in uh, 2018 and the following years, but uh, they changed uh, the way, uh, allowing uh, the municipalities through a bottom-up approach to decide to, to which uh, districts uh, uh, join and uh, but at that point the, it was a, a still a mandatory cooperation so they had to cooperate uh, uh, only deciding to which districts uh, we had some unions uh, inter territorial unions uh, uh, that was a solution not working very well and so with the change of policy of the majority uh, after the elections in 2019, they decided to uh, repeal the, the previous legislation and act a new cooperative legislation providing with this uh, different form of cooperation. And so we have communities, not compulsory. Uh, and in that case, uh, uh, the municipality can uh, decide to cooperate uh, and also uh, deciding in which form, uh, which extensions. They just need to be close one to the other, of course, but uh, given that, they can decide uh, uh, what what to do together, but they can decide uh, apart from these special uh, figures that we have in the mountains, where uh, it's mandatory, they are not only mandatory, but it's, it's the law that created these uh, mountain communities, identifying also the border of the districts uh, in order to have them to deal with uh, with the issues of the various uh, mountain areas, uh, uh, the hill communities. 
there was there was already a peculiar form of cooperation, so they decided only to uh, uh, to form a new way of cooperation for uh, for Il, uh, but his central part of uh, of Priuli. Uh, for the rest, uh, it's really up uh, to to, the, to mayors and uh, city councils. Uh, to identify to identify the, the solutions. Uh, what's the, what, when I said uh, uh, you you need maybe so you the law provide uh, the mayors and city with a possibility, but they need to understand if it's good or not to uh, cooperate, uh, and that could be a budgetary uh, decision, but also you know, they should look at the efficiency part of cooperation, but but something that goes beyond the, the legal provisions. So it's opportunities, it's decision, politics, decision making, maybe. And uh, Pia Marco, perhaps you, you can also ask the question posed by Susan concerning the state of provinces. If Trento and Bolzano are the only case of province now in Italy or provinces are still a constitutional provided legal entity. Well, for sure, Trento Bolzano are the, are the most famous provinces in Italy because they have a special uh, statute that uh, enables them also of uh, enacting the law, so they can adopt law like uh, all uh, all other regions. Uh, while uh, for the rest, we have uh, in uh, in uh, in all other regions, uh, apart from maybe Sicily, but I think they still have uh, provinces uh, in Sicily and uh, other forms of cooperation consortia. It's uh, pretty complex also in Sicily. Uh, that gives you the idea that uh, uh, in reality, special regions uh, are trying to experiment a lot in Italy, uh, giving a good example of trying to find a new solution because uh, uh, we still have a principle of uh, uh, uniformity that we have been, that have been given uh, from, from French experience. Uh, and maybe in Friuli we are trying to like uh, find more specific uh, different solutions uh, for with regard to provinces uh, for in the other regions we still have a uh, provinces like a uh, local governments authority um, when the, the provinces were abolished in in Friuli at the same time there were uh, there was uh, uh, reforms uh, going on uh, at national level they were trying to abolish uh, provinces in the whole of Italy uh, but failed, so they decided only to transform the kind of uh, authority. So before the, the organs, the provincial uh, assembly were directly elected, and uh, subsequently after reforms, uh, it's a second degree uh, election. So it's an indirect, uh, in indirect elections. Uh, so now provinces are yes um, composed by representative of city councils, and. Uh, for the biggest metropolitan areas, uh, provinces has become uh, uh, metropolitan cities. Uh, big, uh, different name and different functions. May I add some consideration on uh, the topic raised? Very interesting. Uh, I agree that there, is, there are a de defensive concept of autonomy and a collaborative concept of, of autonomy. Defensive is I think import, still important in some areas, but the cooperative is very, very interesting. And for example, the um, environment, that's the, there was a question, is an interesting, interesting matter because in Italy the idea is that the, the uh, state fixes a, a, the minimum level and the region can only improve. This is the, the, the logic. But um, for example, when we have a, 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 the sea, a sea, the sea, Adriatic Sea, is shared between many countries, Italy, the Western Balkans, there are many countries. So the problem, and, and many Italian regions, so Friuli, Veneto, and, and, uh, and down, Marche, etc. So the problem, if we have, if we want to improve the level of protection of um, environment to make projects, the problem is mainly to to uh, find the instruments to better better collaborate with other subjects. And it, what is very interesting that we have shared competencies between regions in Italy and state, Italian state, but also other state. But the C is one C, as you, I think you know very well. Uh, so, uh, for example, we have the very interesting experience, and uh, Federico mentioned it, of uh, um, 
uh, a Adriatic Ionic region. The, uh, it's, uh, macro, these macro regions, uh, I think also you are in uh, the Baltic region, uh, and uh, I don't know if you can uh, all also say us uh, something about the, the level of this cooperation. Uh, the macro regional experience is uh, it's a, uh, its first, uh, for its uh, starting is not very consolidated, but there are some interesting outputs. Adriatic Ionic regions is, uh, is expressly focused on environment because the the main uh, the, the center of this collaboration is the sea. That for, for definition, the the water is the same, <laughs> and so uh, it, uh, if uh, we have not uh, a common level of uh, regulation of protection. But uh, the macro region is uh, uh, now a place of collaboration. It, it, it that does not have regulatory power, but the main idea is to use better possible, the better possible, the European funds. Okay, it's uh, related to Interreg project, Adri uh, Adrian. So they 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 do interesting project. Uh, without en about energy, without regulation of fisheries, but we are now at the level of uh, uh, using money. Uh, but I think uh, it could develop in a place to discuss policies. There are not only money, but also regulation, protection of the sea. And uh, so uh, I think the, uh, the, um, the environment is a good example about uh, the relation with the de defensive conception of autonomy and collaborative conception of autonomy. Uh, only a, another little thing not related to the first point that we have uh, a lot uh, studied the problem of identity that was also ra raised, not only about a, m at a macroscopic level, but at a, a microscopic level. When with the Pier Marco and Professor Dorlando, Pier Marco mainly studied this problem, when we discussed how to design our local, uh, local map, is, has our identity a role? In the, the question, you have to understand that the, the, uh, before Matteo said that uh, nearly uh, a half, a half of uh, uh, Friulian people speaks Friulian. But if there are a lot of Friulians, as me, for example, that are Friulian but not don't, don't, do not speak uh, Friulian. So at the end, uh, nearly one million is. Of uh, people of Friulian and Giulia are Friulian, and, and you have another area that that is very little. So the problem, of what is what is to be a Friulian, was also raised when uh, we are we are uh, thinking about how to, de to design local uh, the local authorities. And thank you very much. Um, perhaps Francesco, you can also add something about another question that Susan uh, uh, rose concerning um, the state of, ne of a negotiation between Friuli Venezia Giulia and uh, the state's level. You mentioned the experience of uh, the commissions for the enactment of the statute. Uh, in general, what can we say about the state of negotiation? Uh, I, I think that uh, um, allora, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia is also part of the conference of regions. So Friuli Venezia Giulia is uh, as a multilateral channel with other regions and, uh, and a, 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 some bilateral channels. Uh, for example, I think uh, that uh, um, the one linked with the financial autonomy may be the, the, more, the most important. But uh, um, if I have to, to to underline some negative aspect, aspects and uh, speaking about the, the actuation of the recovery plan in Italy that was uh, previously mentioned by Professor Dorlando and P Professor Spiriopolo uh, 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 made a question. No? Uh, the, in Italy, it is a lot of money. It is the center of nowadays a reflection of administration. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, our relations, the, the system of relation of coordination about, uh, uh, we, we, we speak about PNRR, National 
plan of recovery and resilience. This is the, the name in Italy. Uh, we, 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 we could say that uh, the system of relation has not worked at, the, uh, at its best because uh, um, uh, maybe it, urgency, urgency. Is, uh, uh, has been a justification, but uh, uh, the state has treated us as uh, like uh, all other region without considering, the, for example, the specificity of the integrated system. So the system is conceived as that the local authorities do not relationship directly to the state, but this is the region to to coordinate them. It, it, it is, this is an example. And if we, I don't know what's your idea about it, but if uh, uh, we think that, will, uh, that also in the future, it will be an intervention of Europe uh, with funding project, coordinating a, poli a spending policy, I think that it could be justi justified for the urgency this time, but we have to reflect how to, uh, uh, and I conclude on it, I think it's a general problem, I, as I've mentioned. If we, we are integrated, in a very complex multi-level system, we have to identify the, 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 the places where all parties can express the peculiarities. Thank you. Um, uh, can, I, can I just make a comment on this? That uh, last week when there was a discussion at the uh, Orland Parliament about the self-government development, uh, one of the core issues in the debate was that in situations of urgency and, and situations of exception, as for example in the pandemic, the system of consultation has not been consolidated and is not clear and no one really knows who should speak and what should be done. So even in, in uh, an autonomy which has been in place for a hundred years, this does not yet work. And I think it's an interesting, mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting uh, issue that can in itself be perhaps a theme for a future discussion. Thank of you. I, ag I perfectly agree with you. I perfectly agree. Um, but um i i saw uh, that uh, federico rose his hand before yeah yeah if i may i would like to uh, answer to the question about uh, the uh, regional perception of uh, regarding european union i don't i don't remember uh, who uh, who's um, Petra, Petra. Petra. okay um I think it, it's, uh, uh, it's difficult to answer because I think we, we have to uh, distinguish between the perception of the regional bodies, which I think uh, uh, in our region are very aware of the um, potentialities of the uh, the advantages of uh, uh, being part of the European Union, especially in um, using the European funds. So I, as we mentioned before, all the uh, projects, interreg projects, all the um, all the activities uh, financed with uh, European funds. Um, it's uh, more difficult to answer regarding the citizens, uh, the region uh, of the region, uh, the perception of citizens. I think the most uh, uh, reliable indicator of the um, European uh, the uh, perception about the European Union is the uh, turnout uh, at the um, at the polls uh, at uh, the last European elections in 2019. I um, I have just uh, uh, found out uh, uh, on the on the internet that uh, at the last uh, uh, European election the uh, turnout in our region was uh, um, equal to uh, 57 percent. Which is uh, um, with uh, a light uh, decrease uh, um, from the uh, previous uh, uh, elections, 2014, and uh, regarding the other uh, regions, it, it, it is um, a medium outcome. Other regions, uh, uh, to make some example, Trentino Alto Adige, Tirol, uh, the uh, turnout was uh, about uh, um, 59, so um, 
practically equal. But other uh, uh, northern regions uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Lom Lombardia, um, the region of Milan, uh, was 64%. Uh, uh, and also Piedmont, uh, so Turin, 64%, so uh, higher, a higher outcome. Um, so I think this, maybe there's a lack of uh, communication uh, regarding the importance and the advantages of uh, the European uh, integration process. We can uh, be happy about our outcome if we uh, see the outcomes uh, of uh, southern Italy regions where, um, unfortunately, the, le the outcomes of the polls uh, uh, were uh, very, very uh, lower. Um, I, 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 36% in Sardinia, 37% in Sicily, uh, and they are both uh, um, autonomous, special auto uh, with special regions. Um, so um, it's not a fact uh, between special autonomy region or ordinary region. Um, it's a fact of, of uh, uh, how regions can. Uh, uh, use European funds and communicate the opportunity uh, deriving from European uh, Union uh, uh, membership and European uh, Union funds to their citizens. Thank you, Federico. Now, coming back now to CS suggestion, yes, I think that uh, situations of emergency um, have um, very strong impact uh, on institutional balances. And uh, I think that um, the reaction of a legal system in the end depends on the capacity, on the functioning, on the ordinary functioning of the legal system concerned. For instance, uh, as uh, all the speakers said in Italy, this uh, recovery plan has been conceived in a very centralistic way because usually in Italy, central state has a, a centralistic attitude in uh, creating and implementing its policies. It's a common trend. Uh, Why, for instance, in other systems, I think about um, uh, Germany, for instance, in that system, as, as we know, lenders have a quite strong power. They are quite strong uh, um, counterparts in the relations with the central government. And so the central government pays more attention to lender needs and to lender participation uh, in building and now enacting their national plan. And another thing um, that um, uh, it's quite clear in these uh, dynamics, in my opinion, is that uh, emergency situations require very quick responses. And this means um, an overestimation of the role of the executive bodies with respect to the legislative assemblies. And this is another a common result, I think, of this uh, uh, situation. Um, uh, another thing, very quickly, trying to put in together a question put by Sia concerning the special statutes and another put by Susan concerning the ambition to get more autonomy. Well, um, the ambition to get more autonomy uh, must come to terms with the peculiarities of the special statutes and their amendment procedure. I try to be more precise. If, for instance, Friuli Venezia Giulia would get more autonomy in certain fields, um, apart from the use of the enactment provisions uh, of the statute. Uh, the only way 
to get this to get more autonomy is to change the special statute to add more competencies first of all in the legislative field but if we consider the procedure to amend the special statute uh, we find out that this procedure is led by the national parliament in particular it is required uh, a double deliberation of each chamber and the second one with an absolute majority uh, since this procedure is located within the national parliament it means and uh, unfortunately past experiences witnesses it it means that um, each deputy uh, if for instance regione friuli venezia giulia uh, open starts this amendment procedure during the parliamentary debate each deputy and each senator could present an amendment even an amendment which goes against the will of the regional council um, it happens in friuli venezia giulia in 19 in um, 2016 uh, when we decided to abolish provinces. In that case, just to make an example, the Regional Council started this procedure with, a, um, we called it Legge Voto, which is a deliberation of the Regional Council, which is not a law, technically speaking, but it's just an act useful to start the amendment procedure fixing in this way the boundaries of the amendments the regional council want, want to obtain and within this legge voto the regional council said uh, we don't want provinces anymore but we do not want to introduce in our region the so-called città metropolitane metropolitan cities metropolitan areas what happened that during the amendment procedure within the procedure in front of the, the, the parliament, one senator proposed an amendment um, aimed at introducing these città metropolitane. The assembly voted it. And so in the end, now we have this amendment in the statute uh, through which the provinces are abolished and we have this città metropolitane like a possibility uh, uh, not compulsory but uh, the fact is that um, this experience shows how difficult and how dangerous could be opening starting an amendment procedure to get more autonomy because you you know when you start it and you know what is your intention to do but you don't know what the outcome will be can i i think then we have identified a second kind of big area of of debate and that is the enactment and amendment of uh, special autonomous statutes uh, because we on the Orland Islands in a comparative note, we have had a slightly different problem. Uh, the, the situation at the legal level is very strong in the sense that no amendment of the statute can be done without the agreement both of the Finnish parliament and of the Orland parliament. So in that sense, a parliamentarian in Helsinki cannot impose uh, uh, some amendment or addition uh, but at the same time we, we, what we have experienced in the recent process of amendment of the statute has been that at the at the moment when the different executive authorities make uh, comments on the legislative draft so here is your point uh, Elena about the strong power of the executive um, the the politicians that had inquired the issue were more or less in agreement about how it should be on both the Finnish side and the Orlandic side. But then the authorities uh, posed a lot of questions and problems 
that meant that the political agreement was not possible or is not yet possible to push through. So it's on hold. Thank you.